welcome all new and old. Now it kicks off prior to me getting to Garrett's, I actually put some new line on my spools, basically get it sitting on them spools 110%. So the last thing I wanted to be doing is turning up at Burners and doing that then in a match scenario. So we went to his local lake and I was punching rods, mate. And after, I don't know, X amount of cast, it was sat on them spools, absolutely beautiful. I mean, we were banging rods plus 40 wraps and um, <laughs> it was certainly doing the job. Further on that day, I got to see my little mate, my little mate Henry, lovely little dog it is. <laughs> we always have a little ruck and have a little stroke. Oh, I really do love the little thing, he, he, he's beautiful. In the evening, myself, Garrod and his other half, we sat there and we had a lovely Chinese and my God, did we have a feast. We had crispy duck, we had absolutely everything. We, you know, I, I was, to be honest, I was turning into a bit of a nosa pig myself. It was absolutely beautiful. Have it, mate. Later on that evening, we then made some bags, prepped all the rigs to probably early hours, if I'm honest with you. And it was really um, quite taxing because I've been busy that week and it was just trying to get everything done prior to the match. And that brings you to where I am now, turning up the famous Burners Hall. Garrett and Ben. Yeah. Yeah. Which one was it? It's at A4. We have A4, coach. Yeah. Paul and Vernon. A2. Martin and Ian. B4. Carl and Lewis. A1. A1, was that? Luke and Mike. B1. Andy and Gavin. C1. William and Ricky. B2. James Blake. C3, mate. Callum and Tony. B2. Tony and Sam. A3, that was. Ian and Paul. B3. Damien and Billy. We know where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> I just verified that's the one that came out. All right, lads, so you can head round whenever you're ready. myself and Garrod are at Burners Hall, yes the famous Burners Hall at that and it's the BCAC, it's the uh, quarterfinals did we say? Quarterfinals. Quarterfinals round five this is, so I haven't done match fishing in since 2008-2009 so dearly close in my heart but something that I haven't done so I'm really looking forward to this, um, really really looking forward to this and uh, to be honest with you this morning we've been pulled first. Um, I wish I bought a lottery ticket this morning, if I'm honest with you. We both said that, me and Garrett, or a scratch card or something, because our luck is definitely on our side. Um, what's happening? What's going on now? Let me talk you through it. So we've turned up, obviously we've rushed round to our swim. Rushed round to the swim, and then you've got till 11 o'clock. So it was just after nine o'clock, or half past, sort of nine, nine-ish, come round, you get a chance to set up all your gear. And then at 11 o'clock then, you can also bait up and put leads out but you mustn't put any hook links on or hooks out in the water from 12 the rods are live everything can go out then and then we have got 48 hours on bonus haul and like i said i want to bring you on my journey guys i don't think i've never seen it on youtube before i've never seen anybody try and vlog a, a match so something different something new and something fresh to the youtube platform and you're obviously on the real the realist 
uh, <laughs> fishing YouTube channel on YouTube because normally when we turn up at a lake there's no perks there's no well there isn't there's no perks there's no privileges I'm not going in on baited spots I fish day tickets like everybody else watching this video if you haven't seen me before, my name's Ben and we normally upload, or we do upload every Sunday 7.30. We've also started uploading every Wednesday 7.30 as well. So if you want to join the Parker Bates wave, get it down below, smash that subscribe button so you don't miss any videos going forward. And like I said, hopefully myself and Garrett this session could not only qualify, but bring you an absolute banger. Go on the car and come on, the Parker Bates, baby. <laughs> right then, mate. This is it, isn't it? That's it. We uh, <laughs> how, how the hell we pulled out first, I don't know. No. <laughs> but we're here, we're gonna try and make it happen in what, a couple of minutes? We've got to then start leading around, we find our spots, we know. We've also seen a fish show again, mate. We're just off the, um, sort of in our water, but off the back of the island, sort of on our boundary there. So yeah, fingers crossed, physically can't do any more now. In a second, we're gonna get our, do our leading, get some bait out, and hopefully we can do it, mate, eh? Yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> fingers crossed, baby. <laughs> Just making a PVA bag with the mini mix pellet. Absolutely laced in the uh, flat spot. They absolutely stink, if I'm honest with you. So yeah, that's what I'm doing now. I'm going to finish this bag off, and I'm probably going to make two of these just in case I miss the cast. Then I can go again. Um, but yeah, that's the plan of action. Fingers crossed, I can get this out on the money. Well, it's all go, go, go. Rods are out on the dance floor. I'm not gonna go too heavy with the bait to begin with to see what we can get on the board. Um, I put five spoms over the top. That's literally what I've done. I've got a mix I'll show you later on in this video. And um, yeah, a solid bag on the other rod, zig on the other rod, and I've started at nine foot. I'm trying to keep my noise down because the wind's going right down there. It's gonna tell the world what I'm doing. After this video, I don't really care, but yeah. <laughs> exciting it really is but also a little bit like you know it felt like this in a while to be honest so yeah I'm, I'm really looking forward to it but yeah it's gonna be bum twitchy <laughs> I'll see you in a bit right so you join us in the bivvy because it's absolutely uh, horrendous out there yeah. like, the wind is coming across isn't it it's uh 20 uh sorry seven minutes past two at the moment and we've got gale force winds yeah it's it's bad trying to cast is not easy but we are making it happen and we are definitely doing that and um, we're both fishing rods on the money at the moment physically can't really do too much more we're a bit a little bit reluctant to put too much bait out mate as well weren't we so yeah, sort of... keeping bits keeping it liquefied yeah yeah and real small bits as well we were prepping yesterday mate we've done that um hemp and corn didn't we cool. and we really really put basically put a load of liquid food on it um and yeah absolutely stinks and it's making a lovely flat spot out there well we don't want to obviously fill it in too much the place is getting filled in day in day out with the boats we don't know what's gone out there so we just want to try and get that traction get them moving in it and then and build on that as, as the night goes on 100 percent agree not now on the head there like you said i mean because because they're little bits and we're fishing so much liquid food on there you're almost getting this slop so when it goes out it one, you're, you're creating a cloud, which is perfect, and then fish the zigs over, mate, innit? Yep. But then also, you are putting some uh, food content on the bottom um, that we can fish over tonight. And obviously, I'm fishing a bag as well, so I'm fishing one on a bag and one on a zig, and they're 
they're next to each other so I'm sort of the best of both worlds yeah we, we've both got exactly the same um, strategy of going out we were only actually allowed two zigs yes. per, per team so we've gone one each I think you're sitting about seven foot in your, yeah I think I'm, I'm about six six and a half but obviously where we mark it up out there mm -hmm. in front of me I've got between eight seven and a half and eight foot yeah where your side's at the left and you was going on. in a little bit deeper just over 10 in it up to 10, 10 11 10, around yeah. that it's um, just, you know, in such a small area, so it's good to do that markering up and actually find our depths uh, to see what we're fishing against. So, you know, that should give us dividends later on, so, you know, so for the fish passing through. So, yeah, there it is. That's what we're doing. That's where we're at at the moment. Just fingers crossed we can nick a bite. And also to keep in the loop, the leaderboard, and it's, it is actually in our section as well. Um, so we need to we need to get on top here. We need to catch some fish. But the gentleman um, just over to our right, to the right of the island, as a 22 pounder. 22, yeah. 22 pounder. So it, and he's the guy who actually holds the late record at the moment. He with does. Grumpy. Um, big shout out to you, mate. I mean, I've seen the pictures online. I think it was yeah, 50, Paul, Paul Golden. 52. 51.7. 51. 51. <laughs> yeah. Absolute monster. And definitely one I would love in my photo album, to say the least. So I'm going to leave it at that. And obviously, like I said, we're going to try and bring you on our journey and sort of touch base with you every now and again. Um, and yeah, I'll leave it at that. Happy days. Right, well, I just wanted to keep in the loop, really. Had a bit of a bit of a flop there if I'm honest with you look happens to the best of us mate I've frapped up wind knot dipped all my everything was moist and everything but yeah it seemed to um have happened anyway um this is why it's, I love working as a team here Garrett was straight on it passed in the rod bang within like <laughs> minutes um new, the shock leader retied on wraps done bang rod back mate by this point obviously my other rods then straight back out it was on the money um straight away but yeah these little bits that we're doing i think definitely give you an edge keep them rods in the water that little bit longer and um ultimately bring up your chances which is what we're trying to do but yeah a bit a bit gutted about that but like i said i keep in the loop um not for a second to ever say I'm the best angler in the world. I'm, all, I'm always learning myself, and that is what I love about fishing. And I've said this on my previous um, previous videos up here, actually. Um, sometimes when you're blank, um, you actually take more away from that session because you, when you're blank, you refine what you're doing, you tweak things. But when you're catching, you're catching. You don't really tweak what you're doing. You're catching. Um, so sometimes you can come away from a session with a blank but think, right, I know this, this, and this. I wouldn't do this, this, and this next time I get there. And if the conditions are like that, I would have acted upon it differently. All the notes then been made in your phone. So when you do turn up and you meet that scenario again, you go, right, I'm going to do it. I know exactly what I'm going to do. Yes, I did blank last time, but I know the fish were due to da 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 da. So yeah, interesting. But um, <laughs> I'm going to leave it at that. And uh, fingers crossed, um, we get an absolute screamer in a minute. And then rods are on the money. I've been injecting the bags with the flat spot. Um, we've both been doing that, but that is us keeping the loop up until this point. Happy days. Right, so just quickly then, so obviously two rod rule. Two rods are out, obviously alongside Garrod, we're doing exactly the same. So like I mentioned to you a minute ago about sort of having everything ready. Garrod already done the wraps on this, so obviously by that point the rods were out, I was setting my rod, making all sure that, making sure all that was sweet. Carriage then pass me the rod straight away. I've then put a new solid bag straight on it. So then I leave that up against the bivvy like that. And it seems such a silly thing to do. But what I'm trying to put across is, is the second I get a run, the second it goes over the net cord, boom, then the next rod can go back out and be live on the money, so on, so on, so on, or whatever, or whatever that may be. But little high visas on it, our new magic beans. Been devastating at the moment. They're wafters as well. So they actually sit lovely on the bottom. So you've got that little mini mix there breaking down with that lovely little pinky on top and in my eyes that is a good way to get a quick bite so that's exactly why we're doing that um little shorties also you're not allowed shock leaders as well so this is all new for me so i'm like i said i'm learning here um i'm not used to the used to the fluorocarbon ones but we played about them yesterday mate didn't we? we had a play went up a lake a local lake to him i've got a bit of footage of that actually as well which i'll put on the screen now um but we had a play mate didn't we did i think as long as you stretch out when you get the um long cast leaders it goes tapered from 12 to 30 pounds now with this without actually going stretching out you will just wrap up so make sure you get it pull it really do a good knot obviously do probably panama knot get it test it go over um but once you do get used to it it's uh, i think it's better than the, the normal shock leader no 100 percent agree mate it is one of them and i'm definitely something i'm getting used to but like i said that's what i love about fishing forever learning and um i'm quite i'm quite keen now mate because they don't you'd think you get a lot of 
that it would travel stretch back for stretch. Well, yeah. um, obviously, I normally fish a braided uh, shock leader, which are, well does eliminate it to a degree because obviously I'm fishing mono straight through, not braid. That would help, but a lot of lakes don't offer braid. But anyway, going back to what we're saying, but having that on, it doesn't pull back very much at all. You can fish on the money. And yeah, I'm quite happy with them. Part of that frap up I had there, but that was nothing to do with that. No, so we, we've both yeah. had one. We both. This had one. wind, you, you won't be able to sort of sense it on, on there, but it's it, it's gusting about 35, 40 mile an hour. It's, uh, <laughs> it's it's pretty tasty. It is. It really is. And if you are picking it up on there, apologies my end, but I do want to get some footage outside the bivvy, so it's not just constant footage inside the bivvy. But if we just quickly finish this clip off, if you look out there now, you can see the flat spots coming off the back. It's working like a dream. Look at that, two swans over the back there. Absolutely beautiful, can't do much more. That is literally on my bag. Bosh. It's been a bit mad at the moment, to be honest with you. Um, we've started seeing them. So they're, 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 they're in our water but they're on the boundary um, and they're just our side of the boundary at the moment and they were showing relentlessly at one point I saw five fish show at one point um, so what have we done let me talk through I've literally I've been frantically making bags I've got one on my rod over here loads and loads and loads of um, bags bang, bang 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 all along the line we are now I've literally pulled my rods off it was literally a no-brainer we had to do something about it relentless <laughs> like some some smaller shows bigger than others but yeah it really was um quite a sight to watch they're still going out there now fish is just boshed there right in the middle um of the two two pegs again garrett right in the middle um but yeah we <laughs> literally it's just they're they're here so we've put them out i'm going to give this half an hour now we've literally got a timer on half an hour if i don't have nothing on bottom we've tried it for half an hour then we go zigs obviously i can't go fully in with zigs but i can go a rod each on zigs that this is what we're going to do so try and find the depths of that if they're out there showing it's whether they're up here in the water or down there but it's weird because they're sort of breaches and it looks like they're going but yeah it's one of them it's one of them i'm going to keep watching keep observing and seeing if i can sort of see what's what um but i am looking forward if we don't catch nick a bite in the next 20 minutes half an hour now to playing about with zigs but at least then at the back of my mind I can say you know what I've tried I really have tried with them um, with the bags and I mean I have put two of them my rods now are on fish's heads they are literally on fish's heads where I've seen them show so if I'm not going to have nothing with, with that then I need to resort to the zigs but like I said at least I can say yeah I've tried that so I'm going to leave it at that I'm trying to keep in the loop I'm sorry a bit at the moment but it is quite cool um, I'm just trying to keep calm and um, lock on and not throw rods around too much. <laughs> I'll see you in a bit. it over the zigs like I said and the bags went so we won't be changing over the zigs because they weren't on the bottom sorry they weren't I can't even get my words out mate they weren't uh, top water they actually are on the bottom so flicking his head a lot at the moment so I don't think it's massive but we're in so happy days I'm going to concentrate now and I'll let Steve do that happy days Get in there, boy, mate. <laughs> yes. Rod's back out. I'm thinking of redoing that right and one. Marshall's on the way around. Weigh that up. See what's going on. And go from there. But that was just over here.
If that would sit, it's going to go over 25, isn't it? If it sits tight. Can we uh, maybe put it back down in the middle? Yeah, go on. There you go. Just over 20. Yeah, I'll take that. So Bosch, there it is, first one for me. And um, what was it, 25-1, that one, 25-1. And I think that might just put us um, on top at the moment, but this is, we need to get a few more. This is the, hopefully the first of many, but a beautiful one, a beautiful one at that. And that was on a Parker Bakes, it was on a little uh, yellow wafter, and I'm absolutely buzzing. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Common. Well, let's get some pictures. Yours are three men. There we go, garage letting this one go. Yeah. Happy days, mate. Hopefully the first of many, boy. Brilliant, well done. Cheers, boy. Thank you, mate. Say, so, so do you think you're good with the animals? Check my little gang out. So, Wilfred, Winifer, Peter Andre, Cecil over here. Come here, Cecil. Say hello. So what's your plan of action then, mate? Oh right, mate, so obviously you might have noticed some of you that I've always used Orange Line. Yeah. But I've been using the uh, new Avid 16 pound. Obviously we're more daylight at the moment but we're going into the night time. So for night time and just purely visual, I'll go to my orange line. Obviously we've got less hours of night time now, albeit I've still got 10 meters of leader, uh, which is clear, so it's not gonna spook the fish. But obviously we're fishing so far and, and tight with each other that for this playing the fish, I can see what I'm doing. 100% mate, and look at that. Bright, as you like. <laughs> fish number two in for Ben, just playing it. Coming from right out, probably about 27, 26 wraps out. So, and let's play a little bit. So unfortunately, uh, we're a bit gutted at the moment. Uh, ben just had his second one on. Um, just getting the rod straight back out again. Literally, hook pull, right, just before the net. We don't think it was big, but obviously the, all, all the pounds count. So again, as we said earlier, the rods are going straight out, we can't waste no time. They're in our area, we're on them. We're at the moment, we're, uh, we're leading early doors, but uh, you know, hopefully it's first some money, or not first money, uh, hook pulls. But as you see, went straight back out. Right, wow, sun's going down behind me, and obviously Garrett kept you in the loop there. Not best place, but it is what it is, gotta say positive. Um, I know what they're liking, um, they're loving, they're loving them new magic beans, them yellow ones. Um, starting to feel it a little bit, we have been up since five, but this is early doors still, baby. And um, we're going to keep thumping through, doing everything we possibly can to get fish on the bank. So, fingers crossed. The barbecue on, obviously off the ground. Had a bit of a tidy up look, a little bit. And the wind's just slightly cut off a little bit now, which is nice. Um, wind's still coming across as opposed to down the lake, which I think is pushing the fish in this zone, because there's still fish showing all round here, all round here and all round here, just sort of right up against. Our boundary is, I'll come up here, so you can see this. See where that, see where that swim is? just past that is on the map and it goes all the way up and obviously obviously across so you've got a lot more water there than you would normally have in this peg but that's just the, on the match that's how it's been laid out this particular session so yeah it's game on just had a line on my right hand rod which i'm quite happy about went down twisted the spool up a little bit bob and dropped a little bit but yeah it would be nice to nick a good um a few tonight it really would i'm gutted i lost that one earlier but it is what it is that's fishing eh so where we're at. Look at that. The two lakes behind, if you weren't aware, they do offer. And there's 30 pounders in these as well, I think. So, for further details, head over to their Facebook page or the website.
check it out. There's people fishing over there, look on the bank, and there's people all up there on the bank as well. Fair play to them. Yeah, barbecue on. Come on, the Nossa pigs. Come on, the Parker baits. A rechuck. Garrett definitely doesn't disappoint. We got some chicken. So, I'll show you that in a second. So, boss, there it is. Look at that, absolutely lovely. He definitely doesn't disappoint on the bank, Garrett. We're even eating good food when when we're in a match. So, car in the background there, popping and banging. But yeah. <laughs> I am looking forward to my dinner with a view. Foggy view. Right, well, absolutely pitch black. Just gone three o'clock. They're having it off up there. They've had four or five fish from what I reckon. Whether that's Point or Billy round the corner. And partner. Um, yeah. I don't think I've seen too much go on in front of me. Apologies about the old uh, blurriness there, but sun's starting to come up over there. Over there. Look at that. But yeah, have a little play about, a little rejig, a little bit of top up on bait. And I'll keep in the loop, sort of first light and we're sort of semi more awake, but yeah, been hard going. Come on fish. That main body of fish I reckon are down there. If there's any ones catching, it's definitely moved. Not this way. This way. <laughs> well, good morning guys, it is just gone nine o'clock now I wanted to keep you in the loop obviously it's light out there now um, but obviously very hard to get plenty of video obviously when it's just me and Garrett here and obviously throughout the night um, I did put some spoms out we were very proactive we were, we've been up most of the night to be honest with you I just obviously haven't got that on record um, and we are lagging a little bit now but we've just recharged on coffees and um, Steve um, it's going to be down very soon as well um, and we've got some pastries coming so we're going to have them to try and recharge and um, get through this day but it's going to be very interesting to see what today brings I think we've got a, a, a nice sunny day but the wind is relentless so it's going to be interesting to see how that pans out it's very lot a lot of cloud in the sky as well in front of me at the moment but I haven't been seeing any shows this morning um, but then saying that yesterday morning when we got here about this time I was seeing the odd one show in the middle body of water um, which you can, which is where I've got a which is where I've got a, um, a rod at the moment I could just hear Steve now he's just turned up with the goods over there so um, I'm gonna have something to eat and <laughs> recharge and try and lock on because you start losing focus after a long period of time of looking at the water or everything looks the same but we're ready for it today I uh, don't know what the scores on the doors are but again I'll keep in the loop with that um, but the main priority for me is just, just catch as many fish as possible um, one is definitely not enough um, and also I think I mentioned a comment yesterday about sort of being over 10 foot I'm not a, but the reason the reason why I said that is we're actually looking at a deeper um, previous deeper f um, stuff um, which basically told you the depths which when Garrett was in here been here previous on trips and stuff we've had a look on this swim and that's what it was pulling up but I reckon I'm in just under 10 foot of water with the water the, the way it's dropped at the moment if I'm honest with you so I think the perfect scenario of a zig tonight or going throughout the day would be around that six foot mark I think I'm going to go in with and um, sort of work off that whether that be going down whether that be going up and just just playing about with depths because I need to be proactive and try that so yeah that is the update for now I'm um, sorry I haven't been very proactive throughout the night but obviously being that 
this ain't really been done before in a match scenario when it, with a vlog. Remember reminding of, Garrett made a massive point about this yesterday. We don't have a film crew. We ain't got seven people here um, getting all different camera shots. We're literally doing it ourselves, and obviously Steve. So it does make it quite hard. We've only got two, sorry, three cameras here um, trying to get different bits to bring you guys the best possible content I can. Wind's still relentless down the other end, but it has picked up throughout the night. It was flat calm. I haven't mentioned that yet, um, which was different, which made you allow you to lock onto the water and obviously look at them for ripples and stuff. But again, we weren't really seeing any. We were seeing hearing a lot of boshing behind us. Anyway, I'm waffling. I'm going to leave it at that, and I'll see you in a bit. Right, wow. I've managed to right-hand rod where I was picking them up from yesterday. I've just got to run again, and um, straight away it's locked me up into weed, pulled it through that got up the bank as high as I can try and get a different pressure on it and it seemed to have worked and now it's moving again so hopefully I can land this one and not lose it um, fingers crossed it's Boris and now it's in weed again but I'm literally just keeping that constant pressure on keeping that constant pressure on not giving it anything because obviously I'm barbless hooks here I'm just hoping that it cuts through because it's locked up again just cut through then there she goes, she's coming through, keeping that constant pressure on. <sighs> anyway, I'm going to shut up now and see if I can get down there and catch this. Get this in the net. Let's give a little bit of an update of being, about what I've been up to, why I've been doing it, um, some of the challenges that we're, that, that we're facing and now we're trying to overcome them. So um, it's uh, the, the weather here has been pretty hostile to be to be fair, and um, the weed is probably at its uh, its full height. But what we found, um, a lot of the fish are showing over to my right, and uh, it's probably only about uh, about 18 wraps across from us, uh, well within our our area, and the fish have been showing in line right the way across up to the island. So uh, yesterday, basically, I, I'd worked out and, and, and was, rather than committing to an area, um, I, I was doing solid bags to the fish. The fish were totally all over me, on top of, of the bait, but just nothing was coming of it. Kept up that tactic yesterday, um, all day, I so said I didn't want to commit, the wind is coming in here 30, 40 mile now, and any of you that have been to Burners, um, any wind it says, it, it's that tenfold so I decided um, first thing this morning to uh, have a little investigate about obviously we've gone by sort of what you'd expect by the time to be and I got my grappling lead out and and took it straight we've got uh, three tents over to my right hand side so I, uh, I wrapped up to where it'd be and that's, that's about the 18 wraps uh, I've put it straight out and literally where I was landing was, was bang in the middle of this weed, really struggled to pull the pull, pull the grappler back through. Managed to find a little spot just just after it, which probably had about four foot, four foot clear. So um, with that committed, found it's probably about four foot by six foot. So um, I decided to then put on probably about 10 spoms, but all I've used, rather than going with the normal mix and particles and sauce, I've just gone with 18 mil boilies. My thought for this is, you know, obviously the fish at the moment, they're in spawn mode. You know, they're not really looking for food. If we do, or they are, it, it, it's, you know, we're probably nicking them to be fair. And anyone who is around at the moment who's catching is a little bit more by chance than, than the, you know, the actual fish going out searching for it. So I thought if I could put a little bit of boilies down in, if those, those fish are out in that weed, then, you know, if they come out and come, you know, go over the channel, just hopefully onto my side of it, they might decide to pick a few up. So it's probably about maximum of about 100 boilies. Sounds a lot, but when you're talking to place like this, it, it really isn't. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I spawned out and I kept to that. You know, I made sure I then put a um, solid bag, bang into the spot literally I couldn't have got it more perfect uh, and then the second rod I decided to go over chod rig made a, a really small one so literally probably an inch um, on the chod so if there even was a little bit of underlying weed it'd just sit nicely on top 
Anyway, decided was going to work on an hourly basis with how that was. A few more spawns over the top, but I didn't, again, want to commit anything or overfeed it because the place is, is filled in weekly, you know. And one of the things we have noticed around here, you know, you, you've got some of the best fishermen in the country, uh, you know, so obviously it's the British Championships, and it hasn't been a lot of spotting. You know, what Ben was doing earlier, it was more particle, it was liquid, it was a traction, tractant rather than it being, um, you know, full on food, fill them up. So, but within that, you know, so we've still got this wind, it's been relentless coming in, um, but the, now the temperature's come up. Um, you've got to be careful, don't get sunstroke because it's so windy that you don't actually feel the heat until you come sit in the tent like now. And now I'm actually, you know, I'm dripping. So uh, again, we've all got sun cream on, remember that. If any of you have seen Danny Fairbrass, um, you know, one of the things that he put out, he got skin cancer through not putting on sun cream. So if you are coming out, you are in this weather, I know it's gone a little bit off track here, but just make sure you do use sun cream because, you know, it could save your life. But moving back from that, the sun's now come up, uh, the time's one o'clock in the afternoon. We haven't yet got to the hottest part. And, um, I, I, you know, I've had nothing from these points. So I've now gone to two zigs. I said we're allowed two zigs per pair. Ben's got two on the bottom. Ben's obviously, you know, he's been successful. We've, uh, we've landed one. Unfortunately, we've got a massive weed bed in front of us and we've lost two in the weed. Um, these things happen, you know, one, we're not using leaders, um, again, which can cut through it, and two, also on barbless hooks, which, you know, as soon as that fish gets close in and shakes its head, it's easy for that hook to come out. But for me, I, I, you know, unless I am where I am, you know, I've, I've now switched over to two zigs. I've got one at nine foot and I've got one at 11 foot. I've done one uh, black foam with a red liner, uh, and one uh, red liner with black foam. So I've now put these, um, I've actually casted now beyond, so I'm probably about 25 wraps into the middle of this weed bed and I can clearly see it as the, as the sun's coming down, but that is where the fish are holding up. I don't think the weed is as, as long, I think the weed's probably around about six, seven foot and I'm hoping just to be sitting above that, probably about you know a foot, two foot plus with this uh, sun. Uh, the fish may be looking up, uh, plus we got a full moon tonight, so I'm going to commit now fully uh, to zigs all the way through from here um, up until, you know, we've got 23 hours left. So I think Ben's got the best opportunity with the bottom baits, uh, casting at the island, we've got a nice clear patch, but there's no point that's both having four rods out there and committing everything to it and then ruining each other's chances. Um, so we're trying to you know, capitalise on what we've got. Again, if I do start to see the fish moving or they start rising, then I'll act on it and I'll cast upon it. But I'm really comfortable. I'm mid, mid to three quarter water. Uh, I'm inside my area. Um, you know, and those fish are definitely cha uh, channeling up what they were yesterday. So, um, you know, we hope to get a little bit of an insight again it's um as ben keeps saying as i've said on you know on my last vlog these things you know they come they they give us te they test us it is fishing um you know this is the highest level competition and, and we can't just sit here on our hands we've got to be keep trying we've got to keep trying to do something else um so hopefully i'll give you a bit more of an update hopefully you know i can get something on the bank or even more hopefully between me and ben we get another one on the bank because as much as me putting my zigs out uh we're challenged with where we're casting from so ben's having to hold my zig you know while i'm whacking that out at 200 plus mile an hour and that's going to hurt if it goes through the finger you know we're working together trying to get everything right so it, it don't matter who catches you know we're here a team and we're here to qualify um, so far, um, you know, we're, we're, I think we're only six pound behind. Anything can happen, you know, it can turn on a, a, you know, on a sixpence. You know, we've got Boris in there, they could be, could be hitting 55 pounds, you know. I, I wouldn't care if I got through or not, if, I could, if one of us could get that. But hopefully that's giving you a bit of an insight. Um, and uh, 
sure Ben and all myself will give you some more uh, as we go through. So this is where I'm at really, this whole session has literally been making bags, making bags, making bags. I must have made in excess of 60 bags I reckon since I've been here. Um, absolutely ridiculous. The amount of casting we've done between me and Garrett is abnormal but that is a part of this particular type of fishing. Now I've been fishing bullets mate so you can sort of get a gauge how tight they are um, I'm trying to get them as tight as I can and to be honest I'm not really a massive uh, bag angler but it was necessary that I'd done that on this set on this particular trip um, but yeah I've been making them as tight as I can mini mix pellets and what I've done with them pellets is I've absolutely soaked them in the flat spot and to be honest they've been lingering I went into the factory and I put about five bottles of flat spot over it bit excessive I know but um, it pulls into the pellet and every couple of days especially if you leave them out in the sun it really pulls into them pellet you can keep adding and adding and adding to it you got a good pellet anyway but you're also sort of basically making it on steroids if you like and then I further inject my bag so what I've been doing is just getting the flat spot and putting it in the in the side of the bag getting the bag and really pushing filling up the whole bag you can feel the whole bag come up and I think that's definitely been giving me edge on this particular match, having that excessive amount of um, oil attractant um, in, in, the, in the flat spot. There is good omega levels and uh, good vitamin levels as well. So it's not just a straight up um, oil, there is some thought process behind it. So yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. And um, that's basically what I'm doing. Again, just trying to keep it in the loop, but all guns blazing at the moment to make some more bags. <laughs> I'll see you in a bit. Right, so this seems like a forever going on <laughs> task. More bags, they're getting tighter and tighter, but I'm running out and I'm running out. Um, I'm, I've went into now garage stash of bags, um, but we've just been chasing fish all day, so not really too much to report, but I'm sure you've seen by some of the B-roll up on the screen now of some of the casting. We've just been non-stop banging rods. I've been banging bags. Um, it's showing fish on spots that I know are clear um, from previous sessions but not only that um, from when I first turned up I just chucked the lead out just to reassure myself that them spots were still there um, but yeah so our, our game plan the last couple of hours just so we're completely so completely keeping you in the loop um, the plan of action was obviously the, all the takes that we've had um, I don't know if I recall earlier, I think we got some footage of me playing the fish and I lost that fish. Um, but all the takes that we've had have been from this body of water sort of in between the two pegs on the far bank. So I think, right, no brainer. So we put four rods in a line across that today, trying to be sort of clever with what we're doing. And that's sort of where we're at now. Um, sort of going in tonight, um, what, we at, what I am going to do um, tonight I'm going to fish one rod on the baited spot and I'm going to fish the other rod um, just over to the right of that, sort of in the middle of the island. So my main spot is just to the left, I'm leaning over because it's sort of down over here. But the main, the main baited spot is just over to the left, there's a, there's a tree and it's the tallest point of the tree. And I'm 23 and a half wraps on that spot. And then on my right hand rod, I'm going to go further out, just over 30, because I can go 33 in this peg, so I'm probably going to fish 33 wraps. And I'm going to fish a single on its own towards the island, because I have been seeing fish showing throughout the full moon tonight. You'd like to think that the fish are going to get up, get up behind that island in that shallower water, um, but obviously within my boundary. So, Garrods, every hour we've got a timer. I'm like Steve, it's obviously been a massive help since he's been here. Um, but he's been uh, basically our runner so we've had him on hand the whole time here so I'm like can you set a timer for me and then he let me know when the time is up yeah um, that, that time has now been an hour so then I'll reel the rod in redo it and that's how we've sort of been working or give that one half an hour can you set a timer and me and Garrett have both been doing that on this session just trying to be as clever as humanly possible and also keep rods live in the water for, a long, for as long as possible that, granted there's definitely some practice to be had um, there's been a few occasions we haven't had rods in the water 110% um, but 
like I said, I'm a little bit um, grey. It's been a while. <laughs> it has been a while for me, this, but it is nice to get back into it. A bit of match fishing. I like the sort of competitive side and um, hopefully we can make it happen on that note you know I'm really going to work my backside off today alongside Garrett well, we can only do so much but you've got to keep positive um, not take things too too seriously um, but yeah obviously enjoy what we're doing at the same time but I've got the best bait in the game we just hope um, it happens tonight <laughs> fingers crossed back to time bags or making bags <laughs> Wow, it's dinner time in the Big Brother house and I've got the lucky beanie on open that's going to happen. We're running, we're chasing, we're doing everything we can in our power to try and make it happen. But I'm smiling and the reason why I'm smiling is because is there's a dirty great big bit of steak in front of me. <laughs> Gary's got a nice big smile on his face and um, fingers crossed we're going to have it off tonight. You know, we're going in confident and I really, really do hope... Um, we can nick a couple now on, on, on a serious note we've done everything i've also um got some footage of me spawning now i've been putting these rods out i probably put about just under 20 spoms if i'm honest with you um and i've given my my last little sort of edge in my box was himalayan rock salt fine pink himalayan rock salt obviously prior to a spawn i'm, I'm sure most of you watching this will know exactly what i mean when i say that um I went heavy with it and then also added boilies in as well. Um, so I've added them in and I've literally, but the, the, the great thing about it is, is when you um, add, add the boilies in, you add the salt in, it sort of fills up the rest of the spoms. The actual spom, these wolf spoms that I'm using fly better. So I've been managed to hit clip every single time. Boom, 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 boom. Absolutely beautiful on the money every time. I'm really, really happy with them, like the happiest I've ever been. Um, so yeah, tonight I've got one rod on that at the moment. Again, hit clip on that rod. And then the other other one is, uh, again, right out in front of me. Um, on our sort of boundary, if you like, or just in our, well in our boundary actually, because I could probably go another two wraps if I wanted to, because I reckon I'm fishing around 30 at the moment, give or take, something like that. Um, so yeah, that's the plan of action. And we wanted to keep in the loop. I'm going to show you some of this lovely food that's going on when we're eating it in a second, I'm sure. But obviously Steve's with us tonight. And um, like I said, hopefully the night shift commences very soon. That sun over there is going to drop down over the sort of background. Uh, and I really do, I really do hope it happens. Right, so there it is, there's dinner, steak, paella, fresh prawns cooked by Garrod. Family dinner, look at that. <laughs> Stevie boy. With a view. So 48 hours into the match. Got all the birds around me, not the birds, the flies around me this evening. Smell of absolute, uh, yeah, I won't go there, but yeah. <laughs> I'm looking forward to getting home tomorrow and having a shower to say the least. <laughs> I've made more bags in the bag shop. I think I've had more casting than the casting shop in all, but <laughs> it, yeah, it's uh, one of them, like you said, you got, you got, you got to laugh, otherwise you cry, so. <laughs> so T, do you remember I was talking about me having better friends than you with, with the bird life. It's been out done us both with the flies. <laughs>
Every bit of emotion here. You're not really seeing me, you're just seeing a silhouette there, but I managed to net it. I think Steve got that on video. I'm struggling to get my words out, I'm absolutely shaking, as you, as you do. You I mean, I, I, anybody who watches the channel knows that every fish I get excited anyway. I'm a bit oh, when it comes to stuff like that, and I love it, but after losing two. The last thing I wanted to do was lose that one, but that was off the baited spot, somewhere I know. And um, the pocket baits does it again, baby. Um, I'm just glad I've had one. But in, the, in regards back to the match, I don't have a flicking Scooby, mate. You could have had five last night opposite, you just don't know. I don't have a Scooby. But um, yeah, Garrett, what you, um, Garrett's next to me now. What, what do you, any size? What do you reckon, mate? It's a good 30. It's a good 30, so if, good 30. if he hasn't had anything, that may put us in the lead. If, if, if they haven't had anything, but I find that very yeah. unlikely. I reckon people have had fish, haven't they? But we're going to keep positive. The rods are straight back out on the money. Um, you know, even garage rod there. I was like, right, mate, mate, just whatever you got, just wrap something up quickly. I've just literally grabbed your spare rod off you and then put it out on the spot, and I. Yeah. Um, doesn't matter and again going back to what we have been saying we've been working as a team the whole time here but look I'm going to leave it at that the marshals have been called already and um, we shall see you very soon yeah yes mate This fish might have just made our year. Um, this has put us one ounce in the lead in our section. Unbelievable, you couldn't write it, could you really? But a lovely, typical Burners um, 30 pounder. There's loads in it that look like this. And um, believe it or not, so I've got another sort of bit, bit on it, more on this, so 50 plus, which is just crazy. But Parker Bates does it again. The new magic beans. I've been having them all, I can't lie to you on these little yellows. Um, but yeah, I'm absolutely buzzing, absolutely buzzing. Thank you very much, Mr. Mirror. Oh, yes! All right, we need to get... Oh, Just there, mate, yeah. Right. Some water in there. Is this all one? Yep, yeah. right, that's the one. And Bosch, look at him, he's put his fin up for me. How cool is that? <laughs> How cool is that? Um, <laughs> it's the other side, lost for words. Thank you very much. Bosch. It's a Bosch, there it is. The new Parker Bates Magic Beans doing the do on the whole match here on the BCAC. And this has just put us one ounce in lead. Still loads of time to go, finishes at 12 o'clock today. I'm absolutely buzzing. Thank you very much, Mr. Mirror. Thank you very much, the Parker Bates. <laughs> Get it. <laughs> right, guys, so, um, keeping the loop. Apologies about all the carnage in the back, in the backdrop. Um, gone past the point of worrying what all that looks like if I want to set at the moment I'm patiently sort of sat here and about 10 minutes ago um, sorry not even that maybe five minutes ago I see a fish um, show directly over my right hand side rod I was pacing up and down the bank jumping up and down and making all sorts of funny noises to be honest with you um, Garrett saw it as well straight away <sighs> that that would um, 
and one more fish would make me feel that a little bit more confident. I mean, obviously there's no confidence in it at the moment. There's one ounce in it. It takes someone else to catch or hook into a fish, land that fish, and then boom. Um, which is obviously the people opposite us. Fish has just turned over to my right, um, which would be just in our water there, actually. Right on a... No, that's just out of our water, actually. That's not in our water. Um, but yeah, seeing sort of the odd shows. Um, not only have I seen the one show directly on the, on the bait, I see one show directly in the middle of the island as well. Um, I was watching for a last, so we gave it two hours after having that fish. Um, I had a couple of, I had some monster energy drink. Not saying I really drink, and that made me feel absolutely horrible. So for about half an hour, 40 minutes, I said to Gary, Matt, I said, I've got to lie down. I do not feel well at all. And I really didn't feel well at all. And I'm laying there, and I was spinning. Um, drunk some water and that. And then sort of about an hour later, sort of laying there realizing what's happened um obviously having that fish and thinking my god um <laughs> we're one ounce in the lead you know back in the lead what happened so four four in the morning three in the morning i think it was something like that beep beep left hand rod this is and this is on the baited spot and yesterday um just before bed and i don't think um what I, when i was spawning what i was doing is i was putting out 18 mil OG fish and I was putting in the salt like I said it was the last thing in my armoury and that was the rod that's went um, so with that come down to the rods slow beeps and it was pulled up you know the bobbin was pulled up tight against the uh, the nevel so I pulled down hit into it I goes to Garrett there's nothing there reels in like that reeling in clink and I've and I've, clicked, and I've clicked into this fish, boom, twisted the front of my spool, it's always fish really locked up, twisted the front of my spool, got in contact with it, and this fish just went, <laughs> and I, <laughs> with that, um, I've said to Gary, we both thought of looked at each other and went, oh no, we ain't got a catfish on here, but, and they also said, I've still got to play this very cleverly, and um, sort of softly, but, not give it too much but because obviously I've lost two so I'm sort of sort of scared a little bit if you like so this fish then has went left and it's carried on taking it's done a couple more runs but I know Eric's when I had Eric's from this swim it fighted exactly the same hooked into it slow to start off with and then it just had these crazy sporadic like 10 meters like you know nearly flat rodding your sort of thing so with that, it's when, like I said, it's went left, and then it's cut, went left a bit more, and then it's come back again. So I'm like, right now it's over there, so I've put my tip over to the left now at this point, and I'm sort of pulling the fish back round, because I don't want it taken out my other rod. I'm thinking, I don't want it taken out, because I know that's in the right area as well. So I've managed to get it back round. And after a short while, it's sort of done a few little bit of a merry dance in front. She's come up, and um, I know Steve was over the bank. I'm shaking like a leaf at this point, thinking it needs to go in the net, this fish, it needs to go in the net. I've lost two already, this needs to go in the net. Pulls it up, head come up quite quite, quite easy to be fair, and with that, Garrett's on point, straight underneath it, bang. I'm like, pull that fish over me, and we both looked at him, peered in the net, and there it was, this mid-30 sort of thing, hoping and praying that it was sort of 35 plus, and um, to be the number that it is, just, yeah, it's quite funny. But um, I do reckon it's a ticking time bomb. I wouldn't surprise me at all if the, um, the gentleman in front of us hook into one. And if they do hook into one, they land it. Fair play to them. And it just means we need to get another one. And we just need another good one. And, but I'm, I'm quietly confident after seeing that fish, like I said, just before I started these particular clips, I've been looking out. I've, see, I've seen him out there, mate. <laughs> one fish would make me feel that a little bit more not you've got it but you know what i mean i'm a little bit in the clear now sort of thing bide you some bit of time so if someone else catches one then you're thinking no no it's all right they've got to have a big one hopefully it's a 35 plus or something you know what i mean and there's plenty of them in it and i said that earlier in the video as well you know imagine catching eric's or something like that or one of the big ones you know boris unbelievable anyway i'm gonna leave with that hopefully that gave you a great insight there of exactly what happened um, obviously we didn't get much footage through the night but I really wanted to sort of
give you a bit of a taste in your mouth of exactly what's been going on because um, it has been hairy and obviously tensions are running very high with everyone here um, when you're in a position that you're thinking right we need a fish now to get through and not only do we need a fish it needs to be a good fish and that was this morning so what a perfect way to end this clip and I'll see you in a bit Oh, well, it's hairy. Um, they've, they've landed one over there. Obviously, we the opposite side of the lake. They've just went up the um, marshals and weighed it. So I don't know what it is. I don't know what it weighs, but that does definitely mean we need to catch another fish now. So I think it's crucial at times like this to sit on your hands because I think you can get carried away and think, oh well, I haven't had a run. I need to move my rods. I need to change everything we're doing to get a bite immediately now if that was the case I would have been having them over the duration and I've been sort of moving rods about that rod I left last night was the rod that went so I've topped up with two spoms I know them two rods are fishing am I going to leave them till the end I'm no, I don't know yet I'm not going to say I am until um, well maybe I see something I might see five or six shows in the same spot for say scenario sake and then I can act upon that and then move, maybe move a bag immediately and do it like that but if I don't see that I think I'm going to sit here but I am locked onto the water I'm watching and watching and watching it's sort of the slow pack down sort of begins now really it's coming up to nine o'clock so obviously we've got to be off by 12 and then obviously the next lot come on then and then they do their um, session and see how they get on it's going to be interesting to see how it fishes after this and also when they spawn this is all pre-spawn the lake's been fishing absolutely I haven't really said about this in the video to be honest but from what the bailiff has said everybody around the lake when we were all talking to begin with apparently the lake has been fishing not very well at all the odd fish been coming out um, sort of I think they're thinking about other things at the moment um, maybe not not eating <laughs> so you've got that to contend with but then there is fish feeding i think there is but you've got to remember there's a lot of fish in it um, and if they were all feeding everybody's rods would be going off so yeah that's the update that's the update for now wind's still doing what it has been doing sun's coming up in the sky i'm hoping and praying crossed everything on my body <laughs> hoping that my one my rod or garage rod go we can nick that one and maybe have a chance again so fingers crossed come on carp Again, no fish, but um, it is now 9.35. That gives us just under two and a half hours now to make it happen. So, again, trying to keep in the loop. I've just put five spoms, um, four spoms, sorry, over the top of the spot um, chops. Also, some whole 18 mil. The reason for the chops was so you can get away with doing less spoms because it sort of throws it, doesn't it, and spreads it around a bit more. And loads of the fine Himalayan pink rock salt as well so that's definitely been an edge i think on this um this particular match being that the fish are a bit iffy at the moment i think that extra little bits do give you you might bring your percentages up if you like but yeah sitting on my hands <laughs> sitting on my hands open and praying mate open and praying um what was their weight on their one over there garrett 33 15 or 32 15 one of the two um so yeah it's going to be interesting in it um all we need you know you catch catch like i made, I made the joke earlier but you, you know you you could catch eric's ghosty or you could catch one of the numerous other 40s in it hook into that and also something different and again probably a lot of people on here thinking well what happens if you, you you're hooked into a fish um, when the klaxon goes at 12 well you've actually got and this is new I know this I'm, I'm learning as well 10 minutes you've got to land that fish if you don't land it in the 10 minutes it doesn't count which I guess is fair interesting though didn't know that rule so if we get a run if I if one of us gets a run at 12 you're allowed to hit into that fish um, but yeah you've got to land it within 10 minutes so anyway <laughs> hopefully we get one before that that'd be nice I'm doing everything I can now. I don't want to keep banging rods. I know the um, I know they're presented out. I just need the fish to drop down. Wow, well, last knock-ins now. We've got an hour left, and uh, 
patiently watching the water, hoping and praying, mate, that I get a bite, or Garrett gets a bite. 30, 40 is in here, give or take. One of them drops down, it's game over. And it puts us back in the lead, but like I said, it is what it is, but it's not the end yet, and I'm quite confident if something goes over that spot, drops down, it is absolute game over, so fingers crossed. Maybe the last time you see from me, we're slowly starting to pack down as well. Yeah, it's a... Uh, check in, we've got about half an hour give or take and um, left down rod beep 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 beep, beep. I was like, oh, no. went down, sat by him, think go on go on go on go on go on, run didn't run, Bob and recovered, went back exactly where it was <sighs> a little bit gutted but there still is time so keeping positive like always right well just 18 minutes to go and we've literally just seen a fish roll off the back of the spots which makes it even more twitchy now um but it is what it is you know if we do nick one then we just got to hope and pray it's over the number that we need which is 32 or give or take 32 pound we've got to do more than that so anything over 33 it would have to be really to be safe um but yeah we need you there man we it's been a hard one <laughs> yeah it's been tough conditions you know i think we've done well considering uh, you know, I've become second in our in our sector. I think we're sitting fourth overall, yeah. considering we've got England team members yeah, here some and, good, and some good anglers, high, high quality very, guys, very very good anglers. But we're just before spawning, you know, and I think that, you know certainly over the other side, the guy's done amazing. You know, he's had a he's had a session what, of what a lifetime. Se what section is that, Garrod? C C C one, I think. C, no, C one or C four. So the gentleman yeah. who's on two hundred plus pound at the moment, and even from my my end, you know, fair play, mate. If you ever do watch this, you know that is top class angling. You have absolutely ripped up trees, two forties, load of thirties thrown in the mix. Fair play, you know, fair play. Credit where credit is due. That is good angling. So there it is. We'll leave it at that. Unless um, a miracle happens in the next fifteen minutes, but. It happens. It can happen. It and happens. we had that then beeps. Um, we had them beeps about 20 minutes ago. And like I said, when I was still, when we were looking at it a second ago, just before we started this clip, I've seen a fish over the back of the spot. There, there. We it's have a, got. If it goes <laughs> uh, just before the horn, we've got 10 minutes 10 to land minutes. it. And uh, obviously, Steve will have to be straight on the phone. Quick shot. So, fingers crossed. Right, first one in A2, Paul and Vernon. A little bit of a scrap there, weren't there, Paul? Mm. Hey? With um, Ben and Jared. Uh, Garrett? Garrett, yeah. Garrett, here we go, get that right. And, you know, and eventually took the section lead, you know, with their final fish after trailing by an ounce. <laughs> <laughs> and you finished on 92 <coughs> 10, lads, so well done. C1, uh, <laughs> something yeah. special happened there, really, didn't it? Yeah. Um, Grant Brothers. Obviously, um, <laughs> it's just ridiculous. <laughs> right, so their biggest fish was 47.10, which was clover. And not only was it the biggest of the weekend, it's the biggest of the competition. So for that, you know, put your hands yeah, together mate, for that. Well, yeah. well, thank you very much all. Right, well, unfortunately, it didn't happen, but it really has been a pleasure fishing alongside Garrett on this particular trip and um, getting a little bit of a taste in my mouth of what the match um, 10 years on since me last doing it, or more than that. Um, yeah, it's definitely interesting. Something I think um, I'd love to get back into. I don't know when, but I re really would like to get into this properly and have, have a bit of a bit more of a play. I do like that sort of competitive side to it. I really do. But there's been some good angling all around the pond for sure. Um, but yeah, the famous Burners Hall, another video up here. I really do hope you've enjoyed this one guys, very different and something fresh and I don't think this has been done on the YouTube platform before, videoing a, a match in a BCAC from what I've seen anyway, so yeah I'm absolutely buzzing, um, but it is what it is, so there it is, I'm going to leave it at that, I'm going to leave it at that guys, as you can tell I'm a little bit lost for words, um, but like I said well done to every single person that did um, compete 
and um, thanks, thanks to Garrett as well. Obviously, thanks to Parker Bates. I hope you've enjoyed this Sunday upload, guys. And if you have got some time on your hands now, head over to the channel. There's absolutely hours to binge watch on there. Hours of carpy fishing adventures all around the UK and hitting different day ticket waters. So that's it for me this week. Peace out, and I'll see you all soon.